Well, I mean, essentially, um, first of all, I'm really, really glad to be here. Uh, I'm an avid PFW listener, and I first heard about this issue by listening to PFW. And I'm really heartened by the fact that so many people have shown up. Um, you know, when I, when I pulled up, I told Gloria there was plenty of parking outside, and, and uh, I really was glad that those spaces were starting to be taken. Uh, my name is Andrew Langer. I'm president of a group called the Institute for Liberty. Uh, IFL is, a, is an advocacy group based here in D.C. that focuses on small business and entrepreneurship. Uh, I just took over the organization a few months ago uh, after having been a small business advocate with the nation's largest small business trade association. Uh, and, and really this issue of independent owner operators is something that's very, very important to me. Uh, and so I wanted to come out here to sort of talk a little bit about what, not just what we do, but really where I, I see some of the problems that have happened. Uh, I won't read through my, my sort of lengthy statement that I have. Uh, but I, I'm here because I think something was seriously lost in the process by which D.C. came to this decision. Uh, I'm not, you know, here to speak for or against the meter system. I am a, you know, a taxi cab passenger and I've spoken to a lot of the drivers. But to me, I'm more interested in what went wrong with the process. Uh, can you hear me okay? Is it, uh, yep, thanks. Yeah, I, tend to, I tend to have a booming voice, so it's a, uh, I, I tend to blank out microphones like that. <laughs> um, but anyway, the, the point is, you know, at the federal level, which is where I spend most of my time, uh, I spend a lot of time advocating on the difference between small and large businesses. Uh, you all know that as independent owner operators, as small business owners, you know that there is this fundamental difference between small and large businesses. And most government bureaucrats simply don't get that. And that's not uh, uh, to, to cast aspersions on, on folks who work as civil servants in government. But the fact is that most of them have never spent a day out in the private sector. So they really don't know that there is a substantial difference. One of the drivers was talking a little bit earlier about the fact that he wasn't notified about the new regulations or how they went into place. He just got the notice that there was this mandate that was out there. And that's true for small business owners all over the country. The fact is that small business owners don't have the wherewithal to figure out uh, what new regulations apply to them and how they go about uh, complying with those regulations when they're out there. And so the federal government, the federal level where I've been dealing for a number of years, there are certain things that are in place, certain tools that are in place to give small business owners an extra seat at the table to get their causes heard. We don't have that system here in place. There's something called the Small Business Administration Office of Advocacy, and they review regulatory proposals before they go into place assess the small business impact and demand that the agencies that are regulating make changes to those regulations because of that disparate impact on the small business owners, how they're affected. And then at the, at the tail end of that, there's a national ombudsman for small business at the SBA. So that when you're getting those thousand dollar fines for underinflated or overinflated tires and you don't know what that means, when you're getting fines for not uh, displaying your, uh, your fares properly, uh, for, getting, uh, for not producing a manifest that you don't even need to use, the ombudsman steps in there. And I have right here a model that DC ought to use. The National Ombudsman for Small Business is right here in town. And he's put out a publication about states, how states and localities can develop this person. What does this person do? Essentially, you feel like you're being mistreated by the folks who are regulating you. You complain to the ombudsman's office and the ombudsman helps to investigate that complaint. So that we're not all sitting here talking about you know, the problems that we're having. Though forms like this are absolutely important, but there's a real world impact. They're investigating, they get these complaints thrown out. And so I think that those sorts of things that have been lost in the process need to be taken care of. Because it astounds me, sitting there with, with, uh, with cab drivers and their cabs, to hear about people being fined $1,000. $2,000, $3,000, You all are operating on a shoestring. In this day and age, where fuel prices skyrocketing on a daily basis, especially here in the district, $2,000 in fines can sink you immediately. You know, do not pass go, do not collect your $200. That's it, it's done. And the folks in D.C. need to recognize that fact. This was the wrong time to do this proposal. This was the wrong time to immediately start assessing fees of thousands upon thousands of dollars for cab drivers. I look forward, I'm gonna, I know we're running short on time, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up. But the fact is, I'm happy to work with any of you on this. I'm happy to help advocate. I'm happy to help to bring, work with you all to deliver this sorts of, these sorts of rules and regulations to govern the way the government governs to you. And I wanna conclude with this. The entrepreneurial spirit has always driven America to excellence. 
Many people, especially many people in this room, have traveled from all around the world to our shores, themselves driven by that entrepreneurial spirit. They came here to start small businesses. And many of those people have found their outlet by buying and operating taxicabs. Owning a small business is hard enough these days without government adding to that burden needlessly. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. you just heard from Andrew M. Langer. He is the president of the Institute for Liberty.